Hey everybody, Chris here from Mincemeat Made, and today we're talking about Cura. Today we're starting part one of a three-part series about everything I think you should know about Cura. And today's video is going to be all about the speed of your print and the quality of your print. And not only going over the settings in Cura, I'm actually also going to be going over real prints so we, so we can see what the settings are actually doing and how they're affecting our prints. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so now we are in Cura and I am running this on a Mac, which shouldn't really make much of a difference whether you're Windows or not. Um, the one thing I do want to point out, the version of Cura I'm using is 4.13.1. This is the latest version of Cura to, to date, so if you're watching this in the future, there might be some changes and the interface might be a little bit different, but overall, over the past few years, Cura hasn't changed a whole lot, so you should be good because I'm also going to be teaching you theory through this of what exactly these things mean. So the very first thing is I wanted to talk a little about quality. The quality is probably one of the very first things that I think about when I'm about to 3D print something. So if you can't see this menu right here, and if you just see this, all you have to do is click at this top menu right there, and it will drop down. So if you click quality, you are going to see a few things here. But essentially, what really determines quality is how thin each layer is of your 3D print. So in FDM printing, it's layer by layer built upon each other. So if you have very thin layers, you're going to have a higher quality. If you have very thick layers, you're going to have a lower quality. If you want to change your layer height, you actually want to go right here to layer height. And Cura has a few features that are super helpful for you new people to Cura out there. So if you roll over any of these settings, you're going to notice this dialog box that pops up. And it's really great if you kind of forget because there are so many settings. You can actually see like what it does, what it affects, and it's also what it's affected by. So you can see with the layer height, here are all of the things that it actually affects. So essentially anything that it's printing. And if all of your settings are fine, all of your boxes should be gray. A great feature that Cura does is if I say I want to print at a three millimeter layer height, it's going to give me this orange box. And what that orange box means is this is out of the parameters of what you should be doing, or this is affecting something else and you're not going to be able to achieve that. You can still leave it like that because there's sometimes I'll have a setting that's just a little bit out of the parameters that you should do to get my desired effect, but it'll still print. So Cure is not telling you, no, you're not allowed to do this. It's just trying to gently remind you. So there's one more thing that you need to be aware of when you're doing your layer height, and that is this one right underneath, your initial layer height. This is your very first layer. So no matter what I'm doing when I'm printing, I am always printing at a thick layer height for my very first layer. And that's so I can get a good adhesion and a good stick to the bed. And I almost always stick to a 0.2 layer height because that gets me a really good adhesion for my bed. But this is something that you should play around with. And I mean I stick to a 0.2 even if I'm printing at a 0.08. Like I really want that first layer to be nice and thick and get on that bed a lot because that first layer is really what matters. To physically show you the differences of what this actually does to your model, let's jump to actually seeing these things and I'm going to show you some real good close-ups to kind of better break this down so you fully understand what the quality and your layer height is. The first part I'm going to start with is the very top of the model. So this is a 0 0.08 millimeter layer height. And you can see that the gradation is not as harsh. It does, you start to see some of that plateauing, but it's really not that bad. You could hit this with sandpaper for just, you know, a few swipes and then you'll never even notice there was that. So depending on your layer height at any top point of your model, you're going to see those like gradations and depending on how soft of an angle it is. 
So you can see here, they're not that bad. And you can also see how smooth this is. It is crazy smooth. This is a perfect print. And you can see the buckle, all of the straps, everything. And the detail is all there. Moving on to a 0.1 millimeter layer height, you can see that it really starts to be more noticeable of those lines because the gradation is stretching it essentially. So it's starting to stair step it. The back is really nice. So the vertical walls and things like that do turn out really beautiful. Moving on to a 0.2 millimeter layer height, you can see that you're starting to get stairs. Like it's just stepping down, 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 down. And it's not that great, especially when you have a subtle gradation. Subtle gradations is where this is really going to affect you. But it, looking on the side, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But really where the noticeable parts are is anywhere that it's subtle. Like you can see on the straps here where all of this is starting to come together. You can see, you can start to see a lot of those layers. Moving on to a 0.28 millimeter layer height, you can see that this is bad. I'm not gonna lie. But if detail of quality is not important to you, then, and you just need a print, this could work for you. But you can almost count these lines. Like if I paused this, you could easily count how many lines this was. And you can really see all of those lines. This is a very high millimeter layer height. And then lastly, just a little bit step above that is a 0.3 millimeter layer height. Now this is where you can get some issues and I will show you right there. My extruder could not push out enough to get good layer adhesion. So it was actually starting to pull apart. I could honestly probably pull this apart right now. And if you're looking in some of the details, they're just not there. And it is not a great print. In comparison to crown of the head at a 0 0.08 mil millimeter layer height, like if I change my lighting, you can really start to see how it was barely attaching because I was going too high for my nozzle. In comparison to the 0 0.08 millimeter layer height, you can see that that is full adhesion. It bonded all the layers. And when you're at a 0.3, it did not bond all the layers. It, it, was, it was just having a hard time actually attaching to the model and you weren't getting good layer adhesion. So you have to be careful once you start getting higher. All right, so the next one is speed. And it's under this tab called, <laughs> what do you know, speed. So your print speed is how fast your nozzle actually moves. And this can actually affect quite a bit of things. And I have been asked so many times, how do I get such smooth prints? And every single time I give this answer, I always get the same response. Ugh, God, ugh, no, never mind. And why is that? Because to get really clean prints, you have to print really slow. And I print a lot of my busts and my figures that I do at a 20 millimeter speed. So in what do I mean by 20 millimeter speed? It's 20 millimeters per second. So it isn't moving very fast at all. And this is because the faster you move, the more of a flow it has to get through the nozzle and you eventually will hit a speed to where your nozzle can't push that much filament out. And that's how you get that spittering and it kind of just looks like it's not pushing out enough filament and you get these kind of holes or gaps in this little bit of a pattern. And sometimes people think that they have a clogged nozzle, but sometimes it's just they're printing way too fast. So if you're printing at a really fast speed to try to get your prints as quick as you can and you're getting some weird issues, why don't you just try a print and print it a little bit slower? Now, I will print up to about 60 millimeters a second because I found I can get still a pretty decent quality with that. But if I'm wanting a high resolution, 
I'm getting a very low layer height and then I'm getting a very low speed. Those two things in tandem, you can get some remarkable prints. And if you have multiple objects on your printer and a few of them are, say, skinny or they're not touching the bed in a big way and they could break off really easily, if your travel speed is really fast, it can actually knock into it because, say, some filament might still be on the tip and it knocks into it and it breaks it off the bed. So these are other things to consider. So you don't have to print at a slow travel speed, but if you have some very delicate prints of very small, ornate little things, it is worth trying to play with your travel speed. So I have printed a few more of these Deadpool heads at different speeds, and all of these were printed at a 0.1 layer height. So let's jump over to those and see what the quality difference really is. So this model was printed at 20 millimeters a second, which is very slow. And you can see that the gradation and everything is super smooth and clean. You can look on the pouches, how clean it is. And even looking on the back, like the back is remarkably smooth. The details are great. And, and there's no real imperfections on this model. So this is printed at 70 millimeters a second. And you can see how some of the edges at this magnification is a little rougher. And it's because the speed is going so fast, it can't push out the filament in a constant flow in, at that speed. So if you look on the side of the face, you can see how you've got some imperfections because that's where the filament either starts catching up and pushing out more than it needs. You can get over or under extrusion when you're printing too fast. So you can see how some of that happened right here and you can kind of see some of the patterning that's not the layer lines and it's just because of over extrusion and that's where you can really start to get those zits. And if you're getting some of those issues, it could be your print speed and you need to just slow down. Then if you look at the 160 millimeters a second speed, you can see that it has gotten even worse. And if this is a small model, this is a small model, so it's not as noticeable. But the bigger the model, the more of those issues you're going to start to see of like how it's just printing too fast and it's not keeping up with that flow. I'm just showing you multiple areas of where that's happening. Of You can kind of see some bumps down here on the bottom edge. Then on the back, you can see under extrusion, and that is where the little hole is in the middle of that strap and some of those little pits because it's constantly trying to push out enough, but it's just not going fast enough. And this is all because the nozzle cannot keep up with the speed of flow it needs. The other thing is overhangs. So at the 20 millimeter a second, you can see that that chin looks perfect. The layering and it coming out is really, really good. For an FDM printer, this is pretty amazing. But looking at the 70, it's going out too far. And the thing about this is, is it's going on the overhang edge and it's not cooling down fast enough so it starts to droop and sag and you can kind of start to see those bumps and it's even more noticeable on the 160 realizing that this is a small model and this isn't bad but when you start doing bigger prints you're going to really start to notice this a lot and that's where you can start to see the filaments just kind of fall off and your bottoms look really bad so thanks a lot for sticking to the end, but I still got a bonus tip for you. So all those people that left, <laughs> suckers. If you guys start slowing down your prints, your quality is automatically going to start improving. But there's still some other factors to consider. And those factors are going to be in the next video. I'll see you there.